We begin the current daf from the Sechtes Yevamas Daf Nun Tes. We begin on the bottom of the Tchesma base, three lines up in the back of the oven. But we finish off the discussion from the previous daf, from the previous Mishnah, regarding the case of when you have Sulim that are engaged or married regarding the status that the woman has regarding Truma and what that relationship is like. Starting from the next mission, especially the two stages of marriage, Erison and Nisuin. Machlik is if a Kohen Gadol may marry a Begeris, because a Kohen Gadol has to marry a Basula. The question is a Begeris, and the girl is over 12 and a half, if she is or still has her Basula or not. Machlik is if a Kohen Gadol may marry a woman that was Nivolo Shalik Kedarka. There also, when she had unnatural cohabitation, does that make her not a Basula anymore? Machlik is if a Kohen Gadol may marry a woman that was Nivolo Behema. Again, also that considered a Maisen Bia to make her not a Basula anymore. So we begin the current daf. First, we finish off the Sugyim from the previous Mishnah, on the bottom of the Nchesma base, three lines up in the bottom of the other. So the Mishnah had said, So this woman, if she was widowed or divorced, according to everyone, if she was widowed or divorced from Arison, she's going to be kosher because although Remeyer held, even if she's just engaged to the one that she's possible, like, like a Grusha or Chulza Kain Hedgev, but that's only because she was Mishtamech as Lebi but if she's already divorced, she's not Mishnah Mechas anymore, she never became a Chalala, so then she's going to be Kasha. But from Nisuin, we said she already became a Chalala, a Grusha that has a, a marriage intimately with a Kayin, she becomes a Chalala. So from Nisuin, she's going to be possible. Now, the Gemara introduced a question that's going to relate back to the Allah of the Mishnah. It says, Kayin Gadil, a high priest. Shekidisha Sekitana. Interesting question. What happens if he gets engaged to a girl, and she becomes. A begeres, she turns 12 and a half during the engagement. Now, the significance of this is we'll see in the next Mishnah, on the, on the coming daf, <coughs> that a Kohen Gadol is forbidden with a begeres. And his mitzvah is either a katana or a nada, either under 12 or between 12 and 12 and a half. Now, the question is, what's the halacha? Could he marry her now that she's a begeres or not? What's the question? So, the Gemara explains. On the one hand, do we say basal nisuin as linan? Do we go based on nisuin? There's two stages in the marriage. There's engagement, and then there's marriage. So do we go based on the marriage, and since she's a begeva, she's forbidden to him, because he has to marry a katana? Oh, basal as linan. Do we go based on the engagement? And therefore she's permitted, because when they got engaged, she was not yet a begeva. So Malay says, said to him to nisuin. This was our mission that we have in the Nandolim base. We just mentioned in the Divya Maschal, starting the Gemara, the Mishnah said, Nisam Eloi Nizgarshu, those who are apostle to a Kayin, a Grusha, a Chalutz, whoever it is, but when they get widowed or divorced, so we said, Minan Isuin, if it was from marriage, Psulais, they're apostle to Kuhn because it became a Chalol. But Minan Eresin, if they're only engaged, Kesheris, they're going to be kosher. Oh, so you see, this explains what was the Havamina, what the Gemara is going to reject, but we see that the Psul of Kuhuna, goes based on Nisuin. From the fact that we said that if the Amano was engaged to the Kohen Gadol and then he dies, she doesn't become possible because you don't go based on Eresin, we go based on Nisuin. Ah, so we go based on Nisuin. So over here, when he's engaged to this woman and becomes the Bekeles, the primary element is Nisuin. And since she didn't get married yet and she's ready to Bekeles, we're really forbidden. Amalais, he said to him, no, no, these are not the, the same thing. The Rebbe Chiba Yosef says, what you're telling me is, L'shabi chalol of the loch of our Mishnah. He can wait till she becomes a nada. What? He can wait till she becomes a nada. No, no, she's a beger. Which one? Which case? Oh, she, she became a begeris. She was engaged as a nada, and then she became a begeris before they got married. Whichever one, either Kitano or a nada, and then she became a begeris during the engagement. So he says that, no, that you can't compare the two cases. To make the Shabbat Chalal, to make her Chalal, which is the Halach of our Mishnah, when she, when the Amana is 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 married to the uh, to the to the Kohen Gadol, look at me, Ba'ili. I don't have a question because I understand the Bi the Shabbat Chalal. What makes her Chalal is the Bia. Of course, then it's going to be post Nisuin. Kikin Ba'ili. My question is regarding what it says the pasuk in the Yikra. It says, "Who the Kohen Gadol Isha Bivtula Yikra should take a woman with her virginity when she's a Besula." So the question is, my, when we're talking about the prohibitions of the Kohen Gadol, it says Yikach. My question is, 
kicha de kedushin beinon? Is it the kicha the taking of kedushin? A kicha de nisun beinon? Or do you need the kicha of nisun also that she should be still qualified? So that's nothing to do with the halacha of our Mishnah of halala. Of course, the halala there is post nisun, and that's the criterion of the psul because that's atolim bia, which is after nisun. I'm talking about regarding a different halacha, which is independent of that halacha. You can't compare the two of them. So Malay says, "Hadam et nisun." So Shmuel says, "Okay, don't worry. That's also a Mishnah. We learn later on the Samach Alv and Alv." Mishnah says, "Iris es halman." If interesting case also, a coin gets engaged to a widow. A coin is allowed to marry a widow. Then, guess what? The Kohen Gadol passes away, or whatever. When the Sman Ali's Kohen Gadol, they appoint him, you, you're our next Kohen Gadol. Now, he's engaged to a widow. A Kohen Gadol is not allowed to marry a widow. Says the Mishnah, Yichnois, he's allowed to go ahead and marry that widow, even though he's the Kohen Gadol. Aha, so you see, go back on Erisin. That's what Taisa is discussing, which more one, one way he's saying one way, that's in the Suha, now he's saying the Erisin, Taisa therefore has a different Kajman in the Sugya, but now he's going the other way, he's being right. but yeah, it's not based on the Suha, it's actually based on Erisin, because he's seeing that he can marry her, and, and if he was a Kohen Gadol and based on the Suha, and he's not married a widow, so he saw that again, he says to him, Rav Chiyah by Yisus says back to Shmuel, no, Shami Hasim, there it's different, because the Sib, it says also over there in the Pasig, it says, Yikach Isha, meaning the Pasig says, that Amano and Grusha Bachalala Zainas Elo Yikach and says Ki in Besula Me Amav Yikach Isha. Now this Isha is superfluous. What do you mean? Which you, the word Isha is extra. Just say Ki in Besula Me Amav Yikach. What's the word Isha? So the Gemara later on of Samahal and Avul is marvelous an extra word Isha that if he got engaged to a widow and he be to be appointed to be a Kohen Gadol that he can marry her. In contrast, by Bagyachas, where we don't have any such ribu. So, uh, that he's saying, don't bring me a raya from the halacha of the Mishnah of Zamech That's a special ribu. But by Begaris, no, maybe if she became Begaris before he got married, he would not be able to go ahead and marry her. So it says, but if Shmuel says back, Baruch and I'm here also by Begaris, Ksiv Isha, which is Machlik Yushan, always saying the same Isha, is another word Isha, but, but either as it may, the word Isha should also include not just why is Amon any different than a Begaris. It should be the same halacha. So now he says, no, achas. You could only include one. Well, you can't include two. Okay, but Marisa, what do you see fit? Why are you saying a Kohen Gadol has to have a Basulo and also has to have a woman who's not an Amana? So where do you see fit to tell me that you're including specifically an Amana and not that of a Begedes? And I says, I'll tell you the difference. Oh, a Begedes, a, a girl that's already 12 and a half, Yishtani Gufa, her body changed. Between Aries and the Suin, she went through a physical metamorphosis where her body, she matured. Uh, but over here by the widow, her body didn't change. And therefore, I can tell you that from Yikach Isha, we're only going to include an Almano, which didn't really change. Okay, fine, you can maintain her, and you can marry her. In contrast to that, a Begeras, there was no Raya to tell me that the Halacha would be that if she became a Begeras during the engagement, that he would be allowed to marry her. Maybe he would not be allowed to marry her. This... Kohen who became a Kohen Gadol, he said, I'm sorry, I was appointed to be Kohen Gadol, now you're Begadah, so I can't go ahead and marry you. That's a possibility. Now we can do it, I love the next Mishnah. Again, continue on this theme of these Mishnahs regarding Ksulei Kuhuna, what this has to do with the relationship with a Kohen. <coughs> Kohen Gadol, a high priest, Loisa Alman, is not allowed to marry a widow, that's a Pasuk in the Torah, Ben Alman in the Eres, and whether she's widowed from just being engaged, Ben Alman in the Suin, whether she's widowed from being married, either way, she's a widow from that first husband. And the Kohen Gadol is not allowed to marry her. And also, which the Machlik is, Belisa is a Begeras. Tanakama, who's your mayor, says that he's not allowed to marry a Begeras. If a girl's already over 12 and a half, we'll explain the Gemara why, what's wrong with marrying a Begeras. He has to marry only a Katana or a Naira, she has to be under 12 and a half. But Belisa, Rosh and Machshim Begeras, they say no, it is valid to marry a girl over 12 and a half for a Kohen Gadol. And everyone agrees, Belisa is Mukas Eitz. He's not allowed to marry. A woman that was hit with a piece of wood. What does that mean? It's to say that in the genital area, there was a piece of wood that was lodged in over there. <coughs> where, in other words, she did not lose her virginity through a man. It was through some artificial means that he's not allowed to marry this Vukaset. Okay, so the Imam explains the source of the halacha. We turn about learning the Brisa, the Pasuk says of a Yikra, explaining this halacha, the opening halacha of our Mishnah, that by the kind of the the Pasuk says he now take a widow, says the Braiso, which really our Mishnah also said, Bainamanam and the Edison, whether it's just bringing the Pasik, Bainamanam and the Edison, whether she was widowed from just being engaged, 
or chassan, there's an accident, he died. Bein alamim in the suin, whether widowed from marriage, either one. So the Gemara says, yeah, pshita. Obviously, the Torah just says the word almana, widowed, which would say any type of widow for marriage or engagement. Why do you even need to tell me this? Says the Gemara, no, ma'od the table. Would you tell me? What would you say? Leil of almana, shalom like zeir shalom. Where here it says a kindle does not take almana, and it says in bereishis almana mitamar by tamar that her her father-in-law Yehuda said she be almana here, stay as a widow till the other brother gets older. Oh, malam and as we're over there, tamar was. Widowed from marriage, not engagement. She was married to er, an oinon. I've come and this one also over here should be widowed from marriage. Kamash Mordechai say that no. That the halacha is even if she's widowed from engagement. What? Why? Maybe say that because they're a shavu. You should learn from Tamar that it's only if it's widowed from marriage. No, because when it talks about the prohibition of almana by Kohen Gadol, it says almana ugerusha loyika. So it's to me the gerusha. The pasuk is equating. Provision of a kohen gadol with amana, with that of a gerusha, to teach you ma gerusha, just like a gerusha, as Rashi explains. Gerusha is obvious to us that it's uh, unspecific because there's nothing else to learn out of Zerah Shava as we did by amana to tell me that I would have thought to say that it would be only from the suit. Gerusha, we don't have any such source. So obviously, gerusha is beimin and the suit beimin that isn't that whether she was divorced from marriage or from engagement. Oh, so amana, so the Torah is equating amana gerusha. That the halacha of widow is also being as a man, and it's also from engagement and from marriage. Now, in the Mishnah of Machlekes, the Tanakhama said, "Well, he says we the Kungal is not allowed to marry. Kungal has to marry a girl under twelve and a half." But the Rosh Hashanah they disagreed. They said, "No, she could be a twenty-year-old girl. She's allowed to. He's not allowed to marry that." What's the Machlekes? So, talking about the Brisa, a little bit of a of a, of a, a technical limud. What is the Machlekes? Why? What's the age limit over here? For the kohen gadol who didn't marry, so turn on. It says in the pasuk regarding the kohen gadol, it says, "Who isha bivsulah yikach?" The kohen gadol has to marry a woman bivsulaha in her virginity, which says the Tanakhama problem against. That excludes a girl over twelve and a half. Why? Shakalulah bivsulaha, which Tais explains doesn't really mean totally. It just means somewhat. When the girl matures, so then the virginity gets a little bit lessened. The muscle, it doesn't, it's not as tight, it's lose some of the virginity. And therefore, says the Rameyer, Rameyer, who's the Tanakam of Vishta, says, okay, that's not a Isha Bibsulaha. It's not a Bisula, it's not a full fledged Bisula. So the Kohen Gadol cannot marry her. Those of Shimach Shimbegaz, they say, no, it is valid for the Kohen Gadol to marry a Begaris. So the Gemara says, Mike, what are they disagreeing about? Is she a Bisula or not? So Rameyer saw as follows Bisula, meaning, had it written the word, the word is biv sulaha. As you see over here, there's extra vase and the extra yod here at the end. Meaning, had it, uh, yud, had it written bisula. So, I, I, I would have said, I feel it makes this bisula mashma. That, yeah, even if she has only partial bisula, then it's still a bisula. And I would have permitted the Kongola to marry Bagheras because she has still some of the bisula, some of the virginity. No, but now that it's right, bisulaha, her virginity, what, what's her? What do you mean? Just say basula. What's her basulam? Oh, they come and tell you that a bagaris is forbidden. Because it sounds like that you need a de'ikha kala basulam. What har is har? is coming to tell me something specific. Because you didn't have to say her. Oh, they come and tell me that until she has all the basulam. Okay, that's one thing. Now, once we bring in the teaching, we bring in the whole b'risa, and we just introduce another element. When it says bivsulaha, there's an extra prefix of the extra base. In her basula, in her basula, it sounds like you're coming to expound in the place of her basula. What does that mean? That only bikidarka, if he has beer with her in the natural place, which is where the basulam are, then in then yes, then she becomes possible kain gadol. But if they had beer shaloi kedarka, not in the natural way, then loy, then no, then he's he's not forbidden to her. So according to the mayor. Actually, a kohen gadol is forbidden in a begetis, but he's permitted if the girl had relations shaloi kedarka. That that's coming to tell me that it's only bivsulah b'makom b'sulim, and she's a baula. She's not a b'sula, but it's shaloi kedarka. And since there was not the makom of the b'sulim, therefore that does not make her uh, invalid as a b'sula. Because as Rashi explains, to say that it's coming to say that. Maybe the Bib Sulao is coming to say that it's actually forbidden if she had be a Shalikadarka. 
that you can't say from this Pasuk. And to get around to say that only up until all her besulim are around, and to say that even Shalai Kadarka is a flaw in her besulim, because she's not a full-fledged virgin, as actually Rebbe Lazen and Shem are going to say in a moment, you can't say that, says Rashi. Because once you're telling him that Besulaha is excluding a Bagaris, so of course Ba'ula Shalai Kadarka would be excluded. Because a, a, a Bagaris didn't have any B at all. She's, she's a classic uh, virgin. You're saying she's not a virgin because it's, it's, some of the muscles is weakened and it's not full. Uh, for sure then, you would exclude a Bishul HaKadar. So if the Pasuk is telling me an extra vase to mention the Mokim Sulem, it must be coming to permit Shul HaKadar. Because to answer, I don't need. If I'm answering a Bagheras, I'm for sure answering a Shul HaKadar. Because she had Bia. That's how Rashi explains. So if there's a base over here, because you can see that the opinions are inversely related. So if there's a base, it must be coming to permit a woman that had Biyash like a doctor to the kind of That's the opinion of Rebbein. The next opinion, for the Lord of Rebbein Shemitah, they hold, no. Their, their starting point is different, therefore everything is different. Had it written Bisula, and this is really the crux of the Machlechus, had it written Virgin, they hold Bisula Shleim Lashem. That would have been an intact Virgin. That's the starting point, but that's the difference between your male. So if I would have said Begaris would be forbidden. Oh, now that it says Bisulaha, her virginity, again, the extra unit is just telling me to have to shift it. Hers, what's that? Oh, so tell me I feel a mix of Bisul. Tell me, oh, even if there's only partial Bisul, which is including Begaris. So therefore Begaris is permitted. Okay. Now when this is Bisulaha, the extra base in the beginning, sounds like Bisulaha. What does that mean? So they have a different drasha, and they have to make a different drasha, as we just mentioned beforehand. Bivsula must mean you kol bivsula kayomen, until you have all her virginity around, meaning she didn't lose any of it through having a bia, which is bein bikedarka, bein shaloi kedarka, whether in the natural way or the unnatural way. And because Rashi explains, so once you're telling me that from bivsula ha, you're including that begeras is permitted, that you don't need all the basulim. So then, if you're having a bays, it must be telling me that Bishul Gedarka is forbidden. That's the inverse related. If I read, if I said that Begeras is basil, so for sure I would know Bishul Gedarka is also. So the extra bays in the beginning must tell me it's mutu. According to Blazer Shimon, it's the opposite. Since their starting point is different, Bishula, I would have said, is a whole Bishula. When this is Bishula, it means it doesn't have to be a whole, it can even be Begeras. So that means the extra base in the beginning must be telling me something that's awesome, which is coming to tell me that, however, be a shalai kedarka, however, it's not like Begadas, that is worse, and that is going to be awesome because you don't have all the basul. That's their machlek is in our Mishnah, which is elaborate here in the Braissa, which is, as the Gemara just explained. Now, similarly, Amr Yehuda Amadav, Nivala shalai kedarka. If a woman had be a, in the unnatural way, in the anal way, Pesula lekuhuna. So she is invalid for a kain gadol, as Rashi points out, who he's commanded regarding a besula. And like a Lazar Shimon, when she has bia shalai kedarka, as we just mentioned before, although they hold begedas is kosher, bia shalai kedarka is possible. But because Rashi says you can't say kuhuna means even a kain hedjid, because even if she had bia in the natural way, she'd be kosher, because he doesn't need a he doesn't need a besula or kain. And she doesn't become a zoyna unless she has beer with someone that's forbidden to her. If a regular boy has beer with her out of wedlock, that doesn't make her a zoyna. So there's no problem with zoyna le And there's no problem about she's not a basula because that's only for a kind of It's for a kind of She had beer, she'll like kedarka, then she would be puzzled for a kind of However, Masa Barab, this is the was the teacher of Yudim Barab. But Rabbi asked from the following Raisa. Pasik says in the Bible, it's talking about if someone raped, there's Ma'anis, a girl that's a basula, that's a nara. A young girl that's a basula, it's a virgin. So the Torah says, this man who raped this woman, that to him she should be a wife. Meaning he has an obligation to marry her. Says the Gemara, what's the loisi elisha? Means means a woman that's fit for him. Beloi is to him, a woman that's fit for him. Prat, that excludes, let's say, la'amana. Let's say, Interesting case. If you have a widow, which Rashi explains, has to be talking about that she was widowed from engagement. So you have a woman that was engaged, 
She, her husband died. She's a widow, so she's still a besula, but she's a widow. And this, she's raped Lukayan Gadol. Lukayan Gadol violates this woman. Or let's say Grusha Bechalutza. Also, let's say a woman was divorced or had Chalitza from Erison. Lukayan Hedja to Lukayan Hedja. That is the case that we're telling you that would not have the halacha of them marrying them. Because it's not role for them. So if the Kohen God was Ma'anes a Almona, or the Kohen Hedja was Ma'anes a Gerusha, there's no halacha of Lacey Lisha because it's not role for him. It's a puzzle for Now, says him, wait a second. And this is Robert's getting to a point. That was the Bryce. Robert wants to ask on Rabbi Dimarav's teaching. He says, hey, Chidami, what's the case to Oma? This Bia of Aynes, which the Kohen God was Ma'anes this Almona. What's the case? As follows. Interesting question. Elim and Bikidarka, if what happened was in a regular vaginal rape, this Kohen Gadol was Ma'anis, this widow, what are you talking about? Ma'yeri Mishama Amana, what are you telling me? <laughs> that the Kohen Gadol doesn't marry this victim because she's not Amana? Tebi le Mishama Amana Ba'ula. What do you mean? She's a Ba'ula. As, as actually, as Rashi quotes from Abraissa later on, that interestingly, the Kohen Gadol's own victim He's not allowed to marry because she's by default a bu'ula. And the Kohen Gadol is usher in a bu'ula. So it's considered Isha Shein So why are you telling me that it's Isha Shein because of mana? It's Isha Shein because of bu'ula. Ah, Elav. Obviously, Rabbi's getting to a point. It's Shaloi Kedarka. How did he rape this woman? Anally. In the unnatural way. Oh, so what are you telling me? in because she's a widow. That's why he doesn't have to marry her. But mishum ba'ula, loy. Wait a second. Obviously, shaloi kedalka. She's still a besula. So what are you telling me, Rav? That if a woman had be a shaloi kedalka, she'd puzzle to a kohen gadol. What are you talking about? She's still a besula. It's doch kishprak from the brayso that she's still a besula. And that's why it's only possible because of a mother. Because that's the case when the kind of was ma'anis, the woman, that she's only in the because of a mother, because the rest would be in the royal because of ba'ula. So you see, that's not true. She's still a basula if she had uh, relations in the unnatural way. So the market continues on the base. says, that's not a question on Rav. But mommy, who's the town of that brysa? It's Remeir. It's going like Remeir, who was the town of Kama that we mentioned before. Then he says, the, from the word bisuleha, we learn out, until all her basum are intact, which therefore his husband was, that that's excluding a begadis who doesn't have all her, all her basum. And then the extra base in the beginning is coming to include, to say, meaning is extra, not to inc- meaning to tell me that, yeah, including that we're <coughs> excluding Biyash Lekadarka, that that's actually going to be permitted. Because since we're forbidding, we were saying that, pro- that we were prohibiting a begadis, so we said the, the base is coming to include a. Uh, a Nivalish Lekadarka. So, yeah, that's the one who holds that Nivalish Lekadarka is still considered as a Basula. But Verav, who just had this teaching, the Amar, he says that she's going to be puzzled to Kagala, he's Kerevalaza, who we mentioned before, he learns the Drushas differently. He learns Basileha means it's enough to have mixed with Basul. So we include him again. So then the extra base in the beginning is coming to exclude Biyash Lekadarka, that it's going to be Hasser. So, again, get asked on Rav, that's the Machalik Sanon. Rav is going like a Blazer of Shimon, who hold that Bia Shalaikid, and that's actually what we quoted Rabbi Rav right after we just finished explaining the Blazer of Shimon, they hold Bia Shalaikid Arka is kind of considered not a Basul anymore. And, 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 and that's where Rav's going. Like, you bring me a Bryce that's Kishpat, that you, you could prove that they hold that doesn't make her Bula, that's like Rabbeir, who hold Bia Shalaikid Arka is still a Basul. So, it's not a question on Rav. Rav's going like a Blazer. The problem is, however, says the Gemara, is that e if you tell me that Rav holds a Gemalazim, then you run into a different problem. Because my area, why are you telling me that there's this girl who had Bia Shalek with some boy somewhere, but now we're kind of this red tie, sorry, you're a Ba'ula, you're not a Basul anymore, you're a Pasul to Gangala. Why are you telling me the problem is Mishum Ba'ula because you had Bia, typically Dabal Zaina. And therefore, forget about a Kohen Gadol, even the Kohen had yet would be forbidden to this girl. Why? I thought that doesn't make her a Zaina. Because the Amr of Elazar. Remember, you're telling me Rav holds like Rebbe Rabbi Shimon. Rebbe Lazar's opinion brought later on the Perkin of Samad al from Abayt. He held, interesting Kiddush, most Tanam don't hold like this, but he does hold, Panei Habala Panuya. If a single boy, single girl, 
They have relations shalayla shem ishes not for the purpose of marriages. Also zayna makes her into a zayna harlot, which the Torah says a koyin head yitz not allowed to marry a zayna. So you're back to the question: if you're for entering, if you're telling me that the reason why Rav is saying that the woman who had biyush lekidark is going to be possible to a koyin gadol is because she's a buula. Wait a second, who holds she's a buula? Ribalaza. <laughs> if you hold like Ribalaza, then she is not only problematic because of Baula, and only to a coin Gobel, she's problematic because she became a Zaino. And then she's prohibited, she prohibited even to a coin head yet. So why are you telling me that's Baula? Tell me that's Zaino. Even if it's Baula? Even out, well, like, no, Rav wasn't talking about the case of Baula. Rav was just saying, Nebulash like a dark, Absulakuna. You want to know if it would be Baula, what would be? Yeah, but Rubber, yeah, yeah, Rubber's case was from Ma'anis, but he was only getting to a point. He was just trying to show you that from the case of Ma'anis, that you see that Bish Likadarika does not make her Ba'ula, which is even, you know, even, I mean, whatever. It's, if it's, it, does, it doesn't seem to be that it's a din in Ma'anis Shabbai, it doesn't make her Ba'ula, because it wouldn't make a difference, really, if she's Ma'anis or not. It's the question is, is she Ba'ula or not? Is that, are you still a Ba'ula or not? So we see from there that you are, which we're asking on Rab. But, so, Rav, that says that she's not a basula anymore, so the question is, but forget about of a baula, you're, you're, you're a zaina, if you hold like Rebbe So it's not only a basula for Kain Gold, it's a basula even for Kain Hedget. So Rabbi Yisif, he says, no, when we said this case of this woman who had Biyah Shaloi Kedarka, that now she's possible for Kain Gold, it's Kagun Shanibu Lebehema. So, you're right, if she had relations with a man, even, even unnaturally, it would make her into a zayna. Right? Okay, we're, we're assuming consensual, whatever, this and that. But, but that's only with a man. With a behema, the hasam shum ba'ula ikka. If an animal, she gives a bestiality in an unnatural way, that would make her into ba'ula. That wouldn't make her into a zayna, because the Gemara later on in the sugi is going to tell us there's no znus for a behema. A behema is not an act of znus. So, interestingly, that's the case Rav's talking about. The beer shalikadakr that she had that made a possible kind of gadol was a beer with an animal. Shalikadakr, which is only a problem about bula, which for kind of but no problem about zayna, problem for kind of hedger. Which only a doesn't like this. He says, no, my mom, what is it that you want? I bula havia, if you're telling me that she can't have both. I mean, you can't say, you can't split it. I bula havia, if she's a bula, then zayna not a havia, then obviously she's a zayna too. I mean, if you're considering an act of beer with an animal, a bu- Bia, right, it's not like a piece of wood. You're not telling me she's a mukas eight. You're telling me she's a baula. So if that's the case, so and if she's not a zengu, she's not. Baula not rabbi. She's not going to be a baula, and therefore she should be permitted even to kain gadol. Rachita, we're going to say no. What do you mean? Me didn't have a mukas eight. No, it's the same thing. This is where it gets a little bit uh, um, finer. The point, as follows: mukas eight is a halacha that uh, if a woman's um, uh, virginity was lost by a, a piece of wood, and not through any act of cohabitation. Now, Rabbi Laza said in the Mishnah that a Kohen Gadol is not allowed to marry a Mokasets. Nothing to do with Maisabiyah. Even just, she lost it because of something that was inserted. Now, if you want to say, and this gets interesting, that even Mokasets will be a problem with Shaloi Kedarka, unnatural, let's say there was a piece of wood that got stuck Anally, and that would make her puzzle too. Again, because you have to you have to hold that in your head that we're discussing Shlokeh Darka over here. Shlokeh Darka and Kedarka is fundamentally different. It depends on what we're discussing. Let's discuss a little bit more in detail. But there's a Maisa Bia, which the virtue of having Bia makes you not a Basul anymore. You're not a virgin. You virgin always means it was untainted. Nothing was ever the virgin soil, right? Karka Basula we say it means nothing was ever done with it. Having a Maisa Bia, I mean, it, it could mean you're not a Basul anymore. That has nothing to do with the virginity itself, which is the part of the anatomy of the woman, of the basulam, of the hymen, the muscle that the woman has. But then there's another thing. Nothing to do with my sabia. A piece of wood. A, 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 some, something, a, a tampon, something that could, that could be inserted, that could, that, could, that could ruin the basulam. That's only, obviously, kadarka. Uh, on some level, that's what we're about to discuss. Because uh, unnatural, anally, there's no basulam over there. It's not, there's no muscle over there. There's no, it's not, that, that's a different element. There's no bee over there. So the Gemara is entertaining to say, we're, we're, we're trying to figure out what's going on over here. You're telling me this halach of Rav, that this girl 
who she had something shaloka darka, anally, that now she was changed. So we want to know that she's possible Kohen Gadol. We're trying to figure out why is that only a problem for Kohen Gadol because of Bula. She's not a Bistul anymore. But what, how did she become this? If she became through like a through a Maisa Behemo or with another person, that would make her a design. So why you tell me it's only us Bula for Kohen Gadol? It would be a problem with Kohen Gadol too. So, so the Gemara is entertaining now to say it was through a piece of wood and even Shaloi Kedarka, which is interesting, you want to tell me that would take away her Bistul. That's the Gemara is entertaining right now. Even though it's no Maisa Bia, obviously. It was just a, some type of projectile. And it was Shaloi Kedarka, but anally, that should also make her non Bistul anymore. So that's why she's Bula. But you wouldn't run to Rabbi Amazonia because obviously no Znos with a, with, a, with a piece of wood. Says the no, you can't say that. Because in Cain, if that would be the reason, you would never have a woman that's kosher for a Kayan Gadol. In Talmudic times, they used to go to the bathroom, to the lavatory, and when they would wipe themselves, they would take some stones. Automatically, any time a girl would go and she would clean herself after excreting waste matter, fecal, she, she would automatically become a, a Mukhazetz. Shalai Kadarka. So, so how, how would you ever have a girl that's fit to marry a Kohen Gadol? That can't be, says the Gemara. You can't tell me that she became a Mukhaz each, Shalai Kadarka, and therefore that's what she bustled the Kohen Gadol. So we're back to the question. What is this case of Rav that it's only a problem of Shalai Kadarka that she becomes puzzled to Kohen Gadol, not to Kohen Gadol? So Allah Rav Zeh, rather Rav Zeh says the following interpretation. You could have this teaching of Rav, like we said, according to Rav Lazar, where she is a Bula, Shalai Kadarka, which is really what Rav Lazar's opinion was, but not a Zaina, and neither she can be a Almana, she not can be a Grusha, which those are the other questions we had, that something else is problematic. No. We're talking about Bimama Ennis, a very interesting answer. Ma'enis is, if you have a, a minor, you have a girl that's a young girl that was orphaned, that her brother or her mother married her off to a husband. That marriage is only rabbinic, and she could do something called mir. She could refuse it, she could just walk out. Doesn't need to get it. It's not a biblical marriage. Now, the husband had bia shalikadaka. This guy was only having anal relations. And then she does mir. So there's no problem about Znos, because she was married to him. There's no, she's not widowed, and she's not even divorced. So Rav is coming to tell us that there's a psula v'ula, shaloi kedarka, to a kohen gadol. That's the case that Rav was talking about. By Mima Ennis, you chap oist, you don't have any other problems. She's not a grusha, because she did mion. Doesn't make her a grusha. She's not a zayna, because she was allowed to, she was... Rabbinically married for those times, but she is a Ba'ula. Shalai Gadarka, like a Ba'lasa, which makes her forbidden to the Kohen Gadol. Now the Gemara goes back and continues with the discussion regarding having be with a Behema, which we mentioned in one of the options we were trying to figure out. How did she become a Ba'ula Shalai Gadarka that would make her forbidden as a Ba'ula? So, Kadir on that theme, Amr of Shim he says, like the logic of Abayah, that he holds that, that it's the same thing, um, which means to say that just like it's not znos with an animal, so too it is not ba'ula from an animal. Never little behema. If a woman has bia with a behema, share the guna, kasha, even to the kohen gadol. Because as Rashi explains, she's just what's called a mukas eitz ba'alma. There's no maisa bia over here. You can't call it act of cohabitation. Again, fundamentally, there's two different things that happen when you have a bia. One is that something is, is being inserted. And then there's, do we call this a shame bia? Like we said, we're going to get yibum. We said you have to upchi is chavin le 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 bia. It has to be that you're doing a ma'isa bia. An animal's not called a ma'isa bia. It's just a mukasetz ba'alma. And whoever permits a mukasetz would permit also with an animal. Obviously, if you hold mukasetz is problematic, obviously behem would be problematic simply because of the fact that there's a projectile there that that that's 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 being inserted. Tanya halach similar in the brisa. Never the lemisha in the ish. A woman has bia with someone that's not a man, meaning an animal. So interestingly, after Bishop Eskila, even if, let's say, if there were witnesses and she got a warning, she would actually get the death penalty of being stoned, but when there's no witnesses and there's no warning, she'd actually kshay lakuna. she actually even cost her to a kain gadol because there's, there's, there doesn't make her a tabula, as we say. The Gemara brings us a story, similarly, that Ki Asr Abdimi Omer, Abdimi came along, he said, there was a maisa beriva achas the a story with a young girl. In Hislu, name of the place, she was sweeping the house, Udvo Kelev Kufri. 
These were these big, huge dogs that they would hunt wild animals. And this um, dog sodomized this girl, Macharehel. Shaloi Kedarka, anally, the dog penetrated this girl. Because Rashi says, if it would have been Kedarka, then that wouldn't be any less than the Mukhasates, which that would be possible, like we said in the Mishnah. But here, it was Shaloi Kedarka, Vechshira Rebbe Lekuna. And Rebbe said that she's Kasha Bakuna. Why? For the kind, like as Amar Shmuel said, Lekun God. Why? Because, like we said, <coughs> all it is is a Mukhasates. You don't become Mukhasates Shaloi Kedarka, as we said before. It's not considered a Bumala. And a bia of a behema is not considered a maisa be, bia. So that does not make her into a bulula. And, 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 and there's no problem about mukasei, it's like a darka. Now the command is a technical question. Why, did you tell me Rebbe permitted her for a kind gadol? They made Rebbe kind gadol, mehabba, what do you think in the days of Rebbe there was kind gadol? Like Rashi explains, Rebbe was many generations after the Chorban Abayas. Because he was at the end of the Tanoi. And the days of Yechon Zakai, who was much earlier, the Beis Amigdash was really destroyed as the Mishra teacher in Shanda of Koptesim Abayas. The Beis Amigdash was destroyed, the Yechon Zakai made many, 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 and the rabbi says, come on, no, mean rui le kangal, she would have even been fit for kangal, but obviously not permitting her to an actual kangal. Now, a related discussion to what we were just mentioning regarding with a behemoth. So, only the rabbi and the gear says, me prazakia. He says, ravashi. He says, me noha milsi domina bana, but what do we know? This thing that the rabbis say, that ain's nus le behemoth. That there is no nus le behemoth, meaning to say, like we said, that there's no mycebia on an animal, and therefore there's not, it's not considered an act of nus. So it says the chsiv, it says a pasik in the bar. Pasik says, Lisobi Esnan Zaina U Mechir Kelov. Now, what's Esnan Zaina? What's a Mechir Kelov? So Esnan Zaina is that the Esnan is from the word of ten, of giving. Meaning it's the gift that a person gives to a harlot, to a prostitute for payment for her services. So if he gives her a shepsala, gives her a sheep for payment, or Mechir Kelov, Mechir is an exchange. Of a dog. Let's say someone is a neighbor, they have all these nice dogs, and he has like a whole flock of sheep, and he's like, you know, I would love a dog. So he says, no problem, give me your sheep, and I'll give you my dog. So those sheep, the one that was given to payment for the Zayna, and the one that was given as an exchange of a dog, the Torah tells us you cannot bring it to, Hash, to, to the base of Migdash for any vow because it's an abomination. The fact that it's an exchange for the dog or an exchange for the services of a harlot. Those sheep, even though there's nothing wrong with those sheep themselves, are forbidden. Now, it's not a little mission besides this Tamura that says interesting spin on this. <coughs> what if, let's say, Esnad Kelev, not Esnad Zaina, if, let's say, a person tells you a Zaina, and this is how far people go with their animals, people are buried for their animals, they, they dress them up, they're everyday like part of the family, he says, Here, take this sheep and have relations with my dog. I want to treat out my dog. Here. It's a night out for the dog. I want you to have a relation with the dog. So it's an Esnan Kelev. It's an exchange, it's a, it's a gift for the, uh, for the services for the dog and a Mechir Zayna, which is an exchange of a Zayna for, says, you got, a, you got uh, 50 Zaynas. says, give me one of them and here, take the sheep. So it's, it's a spin on what the biblical case was, the flipping the variable of each one of them. Says the Mishnah Mutab. That's going to be permitted to Mizbeach. Those sheep are permitted to Mizbeach. Why? Because you know the Pasuk says over there, Gam <coughs> Shnehem, the Pasuk ends over there. That Pasuk, Don't bring it to the base of Migdash for any nether, it's an abomination to Hashem your God. Gam Shnehem, also both of them. What's Gam Shnehem? Gam Shnehem. What do you mean, also both of them? You just mentioned the two cases. So that's a mir to say, oh, Shnehem, only two cases are permitted, the Lord Abba, not four, meaning not Esnan Kelev and not Mechir Zayim. Oh, so the fact that we see that Esnan Kelav is permitted, meaning the Znus that the Zoyna had with your dog is not prohibited, obviously it's not a Mice's Znus. Obviously the being that the Zoyna had with the dog does not qualify as Nus, because what else would be Esnan Zoyna? It's not Esnan Zoyna. There was Esnan Kelav, and that's not considered Mice's Znus. That's the source for the Alocha that there's no Znus. For behemoth. That's why we said that there's no bia for behemoth. That's why bia like a darka would not make the woman forbidden to a kohen gadol. Now going back to what we mentioned before regarding the psul of a kohen gadol, the Talmud learns the brayso. Anusas atzmoi. Very interesting case. You said there's no bia for behemoth. Uh, right. The, the song over here was was mis'tavin behemoth, and then and then uh, and then uh, 
you know, relations with, 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 with the Yohana. Right, right. Right, right, right. Right. Yeah, you have to know that, right, which way, what was that case again? Yeah, I was thinking about that, as I said. It shows this is a machlekes. That shows, which one involved, yeah. In the dog. Right, let's think about this. This is a machlekes. I mean, definitely, it seems like... a man onto the hema, not a hema onto a person. Oh, so, meaning he's intending to have a mice to be right, but the shayla is, is an animal him, considered... A, so for a man, is that a mice to be? Right. Is it different? to a behema onto is that a different? woman. Is, is that, that different than behema with a mm-hmm. woman or a, a man with a behema? The behema is doing the mice. Right, would you consider that? Yeah, it's a good question. We consider that as a... What's, it, would, would that be different? But um, but it seems that it's not so posh. It sounds like even in our Gemara itself, the Gemara is contending that, right? Rabbi Yisuf himself assumed that it is a Maisa Beya, just not a Maisa Nus. So it sounds like it's not so posh. How do we qualify the Maisa Behema, right? Rabbi Yisuf is saying it is a Maisa Beya. Rabbi is saying it's not. So you, you can't have your, uh, you know, your cookie and eat it too. He's saying it's, 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 so it's debated. Turn on, then the Brysum, going, going back to this case we actually referenced earlier from Rashi, and this is Atzma Umafutas Atzma. Let's say the Kain Gadol is seduced or raped a girl, so he's not allowed to marry that girl itself because it's, he, it says Ben Basula Yikach, which is at the time of Lekuchen, the time he marries her, she has to be Basula. And by virtue of the fact that he violated her or even seduced her, which the Torah says that he has to marry her, he can't marry her. But, but then Nasser says the Tanakhama, if he married her, Nasser, he, then he's married to her. He's not allowed to marry either if his friend seduced or raped a girl. I mean, even if she's not widowed, she's not divorced, she was just seduced or raped. Lais is not allowed to marry her again because she's not a Ba'ula. She's not a Basula. Now, the Nos, in this case, we have a Machlekes. If he marries her, the Lesbian Yaakov Aimee says, Havlat Chalol. The child is a Chalol, meaning whenever you have a forbidden relationship, a coin with a woman, which in this case is not allowed to marry a Ba'ula, so the child's going to be a Chalol. The Chalol is going to say, No, Havlat Kasha, the child's going to be Kasha. The Gemara explains. We said in the Brisa regarding Anusis Atzmai, the kind of who, if he raped a woman himself, he's not allowed to marry her. But in Nasi, if you married her, in Nasi, she's married. But, remember when the Rabbi says, but it might when you have to divorce her. But again, when you're married, because you did a Kedushin, Kedushin is typhus, but you have to divorce her. You're not be married to this woman because she's not a Basula. Says the Gemara, but the time it is, but in the Brisa, it says in Nasi, Nasi, what do you mean? It says, if you marry her, then you marry. What do you mean you have to divorce her again? What does it mean that you marry? So Rabbi Yaakov says, no, that's to say it's something else. You cannot stay married, so what's the point of saying she's married? If you have to divorce her. It just means to say, The halacha is that um, by a mafuta, you have to give a penalty for seducing a girl. You have to pay the father for seducing her. But if you marry her, it exempts you from the penalty. Where, because by, by Mephati, you only have to pay it only if you don't marry her. Because the Torah says in Shemesh Chabez, if man refuses, then he has to pay. But if more, you marry the Lisha, but if he marries her as a wife, then he doesn't have to give anything. In contrast, as Rashi points out, by Oynes, if a man rapes the woman, he has to give the money right away, even if he's going to marry her. Because the Pasuk says in Dvar Mechabez, he has to give the money no matter what, and he has to marry her. But by, but by Mephati, if he seduces her, he has a choice. If he marries her, he doesn't have to pay. If he doesn't marry her, then he has to pay. So what we're saying is in Nasai Nasai, the Kohen Gadol who seduced this girl, the fact that he marries her, he's married, even though he has to divorce her, but he gets away, he doesn't have to pay the Knas because he married her. Now, the Gemara continues, Azra Rav Gevi of the Beit Kassel, Rav Gevi from Beit Kassel went, and Amal Shmaiti he said over this teaching of Rav Huna that says that the Kohen Gadol has to, however, divorce her with a gift, he said over Kamei de Ravashi. So Amal de Ravashi said to him, how can you say this? This is Rav's teaching, but what Rav, Rabbi and Tabayu, they both say, but get us, a girl that's over 12 and a half, Umukas eights, and if she lost her virginity some artificial way, Lo Yisa, the Kohen is not allowed to marry her, but Bim if he marries her, Nasa, okay, he's married. So says the Gemara Amas, so obviously you see that even by a, a minor who's a Basula, that Saifali is Begeris Tafta. Why? Why, if you marry Begeris, you, could you stay married? Why don't you have to divorce her? Because anyway, she's going to become a Begeris once you're married. Let's say you marry her when she's 10 years old. She's going to become 12 and a half at some point. She's not a bonsai tree. 
it doesn't remain like that like for 10, uh, 10 forever. It should become 12 and a half. So that's why we say, okay, if you married the Begeris, unless they married the Begeris, anyway, she can become Begeris. And so to a certain these Mukas 8 starts off. She's going to, it's a technical term, but she's going to be a Mukas 8, and of it, she's going to end up having B with him and she's going to lose her Basulam. So therefore, Bidi Ebed, if he marries a Mukas 8, he's allowed to stay married to her. So that same logic, Hachanam here also, Saif Ali's Bula Taftav, she's going to end up being a Bula through the marriage with him anyway. So essentially, like Rashi says, when it says in the Bryce of Nasai Nasai, it must mean that she totally married him, that he's allowed to stay married to her. Because since she had beer with him, and she can end up being Bula anyway, so why is that any different than Rav's halacha that you let us stay married to the Megaris, the Mukazai? Because it's going to end up being anyway. So the Kasha, that definitely is a difficulty on his teaching that, yeah, why would she, why would you have to be Mitzi again? If anyway, you would have that thing which you allow by Gezim Mukazai, so Bula should give me anyway also, so why would that make it that you cannot stay married? Thank you to any time. Those things. Sure.